Okay, there it is. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> we do know how to use computers. Yes. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. So, um, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right. So I'm just I'm just gonna talk right like this uh, because I'm gonna also code a little bit. Uh, does anybody hear me? Yes. All right. We're ready. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, hello everyone again. So we're gonna talk about test-driven development. So before we dive in, let me get a quick show of hands. So who in this room writes tests? Raise their hands. Wow, it's pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So now, who is in this who in this room thinks that they do test-driven development? Raise their hands. Okay. Okay, so there's a le little less hands, but no worries. Uh, this talk is about how to do this and how to do this specifically with Xcode. So after listening to this presentation, um, you will be like you will know how to execute a simple process that will lead you to doing test-driven development. So let me tell you a little bit more about myself. So my name is Alex Moykin. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm CTO at, at the company called Thinkalike. So we are an early stage startup called Thinkalike. Uh, we have an awesome uh, social platform. It's mobile only. So check us out at thinkalike.us um, and tell me what to think. I'm also a book author. Um, I wrote a book called Start Programming Now. Uh, this book is oriented towards non-technical people, people who don't have CS degree, and it helps them to get the ball rolling with programming. So check it out on startprogrammingnowbook.com. It's free to read online. So I also play ping pong, uh, and table tennis is pretty awesome. So I won three seasons of the Los Angeles Table Tennis Federation League. Uh, I have two more of those trophies in my closet. I have a ton of medals, but my daughter collects them, and I don't have medals anymore. <laughs> All right, so. Here's what we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna talk about what is test-driven development. So we will start with the definition. What is test-driven development? We're gonna talk about why TDD, like why we wanna do this, what TDD is good for, what TDD is not good for. And the last, we're gonna talk about how it's done with Xcode. So I'll show you uh, my personal workflow. I'll show you how I work um, and how I do test-driven development specifically in Xcode. Cool. So now, what's TDD? Uh, TDD is a process, a uh, process of writing software. It consists of three main steps. So the first step, you write initially failing test. Step number two, you write the minimum amount of code possible to make this test to pass. And step number three, you get the same code and you refactor it to make it better and you run the same test again to make sure that your code still does what it's supposed to do. So, three simple steps. So, why, why, why even bother, right? So, we are smart people, there's a lot of smart people in the room, we all write software. Uh, why even think about changing how we write software at all? So, uh, and I always bring this very simple example where, um, this is a simple graph of features over time. So let's say today you start a new project, new Greenfield project, and everything's fine, everything's great, um, and you wrote zero code. This is awesome place to be because you have zero tests. You have no code, nothing to test. Uh, so now you move on to day number one where you implement your first feature. If you do it in a conventional way, you implement your first feature, you look in the simulator, you basically check everything out, you test it on simulator, and then you move on to the feature number two. So then, day two, you implement feature number two, now you need to actually test in the simulator feature number two, and go back to test feature number one. So then, month later, you have 25 features, you implement your 26th feature, and this is really awesome, but you also have all those 25 features that you implemented last month, so, and you, usually just don't remember what those features are. So what ends up happening in reality, you just don't test, you forget about things, and you introduce bugs, without even knowing that it is actually the case. 
Later on, three months later, you have 75 features in your app, you're working on your 76th feature, and what ends up happening, there's all this code sitting uh, that you are not aware of, and you don't go back and test all 75 use cases that you previously written code for. So test-driven development is about automating this very, very boring process of testing. So uh, I think engineers are smart people and uh, testing is very boring, so I think automating it makes sense. And it also allows us to run all our tests with just running one command. In Xcode, it's just one simple keystroke. So in test-driven development way, we build a foundation for um, all our features that we are implementing uh, that allows us to run all tests, all 75 tests, three months later with just one keystroke and not worry about this at all. Cool. So in addition to that, test-driven development has five more major benefits. So first, uh, it is great for shipping stable product. So the product is stable because you follow iterative development where you work on the feature, write tests for this feature, work on the next feature, write tests for this feature. So if you follow the same process, it's really easy to produce stable product. And the product is stable at any given point in time. It is always stable instead of traditionally where you just write a bunch of code and then your app becomes very buggy because you introduced a lot of changes and you need to test and fix bugs all in succession, all at the same time. Uh, your code is easy to refactor. Uh, because you have tests, you can, you're more likely to refactor legacy code that you have if you have tests because you, the, you know that tests uh, got you back. Um, you can always execute your tests and this test will make sure that your code still does uh, what it used to do. So tests are your documentation. I personally, uh, when I don't know a particular area, uh, I go in the tests first to understand how code works because tell, tests tell me exactly how a particular piece of code is supposed to work. Uh, whereas looking into the implementation and guessing how this code is supposed to work is not always a very reliable way to understand how code works. And uh, benefit number five, Test-driven development leads you to uh, increased code quality. So your code quality gets better, your code is easier to read, easier to write, easier to maintain. So that basically leads to a primary use case for test-driven development, which is good for, for shipping stable product. So if you do know for sure that the features that you work on like business really, really needs it, and uh, you do know that you want to work on feature number one, tomorrow there's going to be feature number two, feature number three, four, five, and, uh, and etc. You do need to start test-driven development, it's a great way to actually incrementally roll out very important changes in your app. On the other hand side, we all know there's no silver bullet, uh, and there is, we should use the right tool for the job, Test-driven development, that's so great for prototyping. So if you don't know what you're doing, if you work on, I don't know, a prototype that you know you're not gonna ship it, you're not gonna ship it to real users, you're just experimenting with things, and you do know that, um, that whatever you're working on is gonna go get thrown away soon, then test-driven development doesn't bring you any good. You're basically writing great tests, great code, and it's all waste because you're gonna throw it away. So, listen to the grumpy cat, don't use TDD for the first time. All right, so here's how we're gonna do this. Very simple, three steps. First, initial test, we write the initially failing test. Second, we make it green. Third, we refactor. And then we start over, so it's a cycle. It is, starts with the point number one, goes to number two, goes to number three, and go back to number one. All right, I can talk a lot, um, but I think uh, in order to illustrate this point better, let's just dive in and write some code. All right, so this is a very big display. So before we dive in, I'm gonna ask Apple to scale it best for that display.
All right, so I'm going to create a new export project, um, and it's going to be a single view application. So I'm a big fan of the agile, agile uh, process, which is an incremental process uh, of writing software. So in Agile, there's two major meetings. Uh, one of them is called IPM, where you plan uh, work for the upcoming iteration. Hey, you're oh. Yo, yo, can you hear now? Better. All right. So uh, I'm gonna go to. So I'll try to speak louder, but uh, it will be very hard to go and talk into the microphone. So uh, Agile is a great methodology. There's two major meetings in Agile. One of them is called IPM. Uh, in on IPM, you scope the work for the upcoming iteration. And there's another awesome meeting right at the end of your iteration called retrospective meeting where you sit down with your team and go and look uh, back in your, uh, you know, in, in a week to figure out what worked, what didn't work, so you can iterate on your process, on your code, and, uh, you know, make things better. The thing that, you know, but the things that uh, don't really work for me for retro, that during the week I need to remember to bring up things right at the end of the week so I forget things. Uh, so, we're going to write a simple retro topics application. Not that the world needs another to do app, but it will help me to illustrate, you know, to show you what Azure Development is. All right, so, jeez, how am I going to do this? Wait, didn't work. Yeah, just leave it right there. Just leave it right there. Right here? Yeah. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> hear me? Is it, is it all working? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is magic. All right. So, uh, so Retro Topics is the name of our app. Uh, we're gonna. So, what language should we choose? Swift, Objective C. Swift. Swift. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're gonna uh, include unit tests. So, this awesome checkbox over here that says unit test. Uh, so we're going to save it on our desktop, and this is now our awesome application. So I'm going to bump the font so you guys can see this. Uh, can you guys Bigger. see the code? Bigger. Bigger. Yeah. Bigger. Yes? Yay. All right. Bigger? <laughs> okay. Perfect. 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 All right, so the first thing I do when I generate new project, I just go ahead and I delete this auto-generated stuff that I no longer need. So, what's the step number one in test-driven development? Building test. Right initial failing test. Nice. So, we're going to build this app ground up. We're going to start with the data model. So, in order to capture retro topics, we need topics, right? So, uh, I'm going to create topics test. So, the convention here is to basically uh, put the file name of the class that you're testing and then put the test right after it. So, then in that way, you can easily find the code that you're, uh, the code and the test uh, if it has the same name in it. So, we're going to create a topic model. Um, so, actually, it's going to be topic test. And it's going to live inside the retro topics uh, test bundle. So create version header, sure. Uh, so the first thing I do usually I just delete all that stuff in there. So uh, one important thing here that tests need to live inside the test module, and this is uh, this allows you to basically have your app code and test code isolated. Uh, and your app code should live in the app module, and there's a little wrinkle to that, which I'll come back later. All right, so the first thing first, we need to import our awesome framework called XCTest. Uh, XCTest will allow us to test our stuff. It provides us with a nice framework that we can follow. Second, uh, I'm using Xcode 7, so I'm going to do testable import, and I'm going to import retro topics here. Uh, which is the name of the app module. So, app testable uh, feature, 
come like uh, ships with Xcode 7. Uh, Xcode 7 introduces this feature, and this is feature is really really nice because in this way when you import stuff with add testable, um, what we are doing here we import the retro topics module which has our application code inside our test bundle, and if we do add testable, that code will preserve uh, its access level. In other words. We won't have to otherwise make things public in order to be able to test it, which we'll have to do uh, if you use Xcode 6.4. So, uh, first thing first, we create we create a class called Topic Test. So the class will inherit from XC Test Case, uh, and that's pretty much it. So we got your test class. Uh, so in order to create a test, we need to create a function, and this function. Uh, Got to start with the test. So for our topic, we're going to test attributes. What? <laughs> yeah. All right. So in order to test our topic, we need to get a topic first. So let's get a topic. So, and the point here that you write tests to shape your code. So you write tests the way you want this, the want you the way you want your code to look. So you see that we are writing tests first. We are not writing our application code first. So I'm go I want my topic to uh, get some text, and we're going to talk about new ping pong table on our retro <laughs> because ping pong is awesome. And I'm going to use uh, the XCT assert equal matcher to assert. That so the big one table is is uh, topic style uh, text. Cool. So that's our test. Uh, so let's run it. So in order to run this particular test, uh, there's several ways to do this. Um, you can click on one of those icons on the left. That in this case will end up running the entire topic test uh, class. So. There's a better way, I mean, a faster way of doing it, uh, which is a keyboard shortcut. So I'm a big fan of, you know, increased productivity. I like to find tools that help me to do whatever I want to do faster. And uh, I usually focus on keyboard shortcuts because keyboard shortcut, shortcuts allow me to keep my hands on the keyboard instead of uh, getting my hand down to the trackpad and then moving it back in, which takes more time. So, let me illustrate one shortcut uh, that's going to run our test, which is uh, product run topic test, which is control option command U. So, we're going to go back and hit that. So, da 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 da. And now we have an error. So, compile errors and test errors. They are all failing tests. So your failing test it doesn't matter how it fails. It doesn't compile, it doesn't run, or it runs and fails. It's all failing tests. And we now at the step number one. So that's great. So where do we go? What's the step number two? Make it pass. Make it pass. So in order to make it pass, um, we're going to read an error, and our compiler and our test will guide us through, and that will allow us to understand what we need to build. What's the minimum amount of code possible that we need to write in order to make this test pass? So, user find result identifier topic. So, what is that we need to do to make this particular error go away? Create a file. Create a file. All right. That's that's the first thing. So, let's create a file. Next. Define. So we need to define our identifier topic, right? So what I usually do, I usually split uh, my implementation and my test side by side. So I see the test on the right hand side or code on the left hand side. And the way I do this, uh, I usually don't use this menu on the left hand side. I usually just use it to create new files. Uh, but I, the most used shortcut for me uh, is open quickly, which is right here. No, this one. So, which is shift command O, uh, where I type the name of the file that I want to open. Uh, so, I hit enter to open it on the left hand side, and I hit 
option error to open whatever I want on the right hand side. So, uh, but now we need to switch between the two, right? <laughs> so now we have two files, now we need to switch between the two. We could click on the left hand side and right hand side, uh, but I prefer to use keyboard shortcuts to do it faster, which leads me to the next shortcut called Command J. So Command J uh, allows me to basically go on the left or go on the right very fast. So um, Command J, enter, I'm on the left. Command J, right, enter, I'm on the right. So now let's rerun our test to see if the error goes away. So in order to rerun our test, we need to run whatever we ran before again. So one way of doing this would be to go here and hit option command, uh, control option command U to run our test again. But there's even better way of doing this if you are writing your implementation code, which is uh, here in the product, your phone action, run topic test again, which is uh, control option command G. So you just basically press the whole cord, hit G, and your code is run again. Cool. So uh, our error didn't go away, so it says it's use of unresolved identifier topics. So I'm going to create a struct uh, called topic, and I'm going to rerun my test again with the core G. So control option command G. So now we have a different error. So in order to see errors in the entire project, I usually go with command four, which leads me straight to my debugger, uh, sorry, the, the error window over here on the left. It says extra argument text and call. So what do we need to do to fix this error? Add a property, right? So I'm gonna add a variable, uh, add a property uh, called text. Uh, and it's gonna be a string. In fact, it actually doesn't have to be a var, so let And we're gonna run it again. This time build succeeds fires up a simulator, so in a couple seconds our test will actually run. So, test succeeds. So now we're in step number two. So that's it, test succeeded. Uh, so what do we do next? Uh, refactor. Refactor, that's right. All right, so um, there's not much refactor on the left-hand side, uh, but there's one thing that I would love to do on the right-hand side, uh, which is basically I would love to uh, get this duplicated text out of the way in the variable. Uh, I follow a habit of not duplicating data because duplicated data goes out of hand pretty quickly. Like the minute you have a code duplication or data duplication, you change it over here, you forgot to change it over here, it goes out of hand. So I'm going to uh, make a local variable called text where I'm going to put it over here. So, and we run the same test. So we run the same test, and test succeeds. That's it. No, so, gotta make it fail now. Gotta make it fail now. So, that's, that's, <laughs> yes. We, we will, after we get to the point number three, this is a cycle. So, we need to start over. Uh, so, we're gonna start over with the failing test again. So, I'm gonna add a new property. I really, really want uh, my topic to have a status. So, and I want my uh, status to be pending here because, you know, we didn't talk about ping pong table in our registry yet. So, and I'm gonna assert that pending is topic status. Cool. How do you run tests? So, control option command G is to run last test. It will run the previously executed test, uh, which in our case is the same test, right? So it's going to work. Uh, but in order to run all the tests in the same file, we need to go in here in product, perform action, run topic test, which is control option command U. So we're going to run that, and the test fails. What do we do next? Take a green. 
make it green. In order to make it green, it is very simple. Uh, we're going to add a status property here. Uh, status is going to be of the topic status type. So I'm going to create a simple enum over here that represents topics, uh, topics type. And, um, ooh. Yeah. okay, here we go. Uh, and it's going to be pending. Okay. And I'm going to, okay, that's a good one. Okay, so type of expression is ambiguous without, without no more okay. context. So, interesting that you will need to provide topic status over here, but you won't need to do this in XCON 6.4, because um, later on after this talk, I'll post both projects. This is very interesting. I think it's a bug. All right, so test succeeds. Uh, so, and when we finished with our green step, we go back and refactor. At this point, I don't really see any refactorings that we need to do, so we'll need to move on. So that's pretty much how you build things in a test-driven development way. Uh, that's the whole process. There, there's no magic to this. You basically write your test first, then you make a code pass, then you refactor. So then you bring it on to the next level, bring it on, bring it on the view controller, start plugging things in. But this is all it is. You basically get object, instantiate, instantiate objects, objects in memory, uh, and test them out. So I'm gonna uh, run. Uh, we're gonna go one more time. So we're gonna we're gonna do one general pass through uh, where we're gonna add a view controller. Shall we? Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. So. What do we do first? Well, we want to add a new view controller. We're going to create a test. That's right. Uh, I was thinking that we're going, to be, we're going to create a file view controller. No, we're going to create a test. All right, so uh, this is going to be topics view controller test. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit because uh, we want to listen to more presentations over here. Uh, so. We're going to import XC test. Uh, we're going to testable import uh, virtual topics here. So I'm going to create a class. Uh, so topics. So I'm going to create from C test case. Yep. Uh, so, and I'm going to test that. When I, create, when I use my view controller, it returns me the right number of topics. Cool. So, view controllers are a little tricky, uh, especially if you use them with storyboards. So, in order to get our view controller out of storyboards, here's what we need to do. We need to get the storyboard. Which is UI storyboard. So then uh, we're gonna create uh, our controller out of our storyboard. So we're gonna instantiate an initial view controller. We're gonna cast it to topics view controller. Uh, so then um, we're gonna actually we need to we need topics. To for our topics view controller, so it's going to be an array of topics. So the text will be thing, thing, and yes, the next one is going to be form status ending. So we're going to assign topics. Controller, yep. and after that, we're gonna serve equal. So there's gonna be two since we create two topics. Uh, I'm just gonna expand it so the code is easier to easier to read. 
Uh, and we're going to call our awesome function called table view. Uh, That's our test. So, how do you run tests in the file? Control option command G. Control option command G. You memorized that shortcut. This is uh, to run your last test. But in order to write tests in this file, we're going to hit control option command U. So, U stands for unit test. That's how we usually I memorize it. So, maybe it'll help you to memorize it as well. So, um, so here we go, user fund declare type topics view controller. So in order to get our topics view controller, we're going to create a new topics view controller over here. So there we go. So notice that topics view control inside our is inside our retro topics uh, module, but it's not inside our retro topics test module because if you're going to put them in both, you're going to compile it twice. And you want to do this uh, because you. You know, you don't want to compile uh, the same file over and over again to be slow. Cool. So then uh, we're going to port UI kit and then um, yeah, let's create this topics view controller class that has one UI kit controller. And uh, that, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to open my test on the left hand side and run it with the control option command G. Wow, which I didn't want to do. Alright, so, so the value of type topics view controller uh, does not have topics. Our controller does not have any topics. So we're going to create new topics here and it's going to be an array of topics. Uh, that's cool. Run a test again. So now we fail differently. So now, now what? Now, how it So, value of type topics view controller has no member table view. Okay. So, in order to make it happen, we need to go to our friend called Storyboard, see some beach ball. This always comes with that. Uh, so, we're going to get the table view. Gonna get it over here. Uh, so, that's all good. I'm gonna just make it to span the entire screen. So then I'm gonna open it in the system editor on the right hand side and on the topic speed controller. Oops, here. So first of all we need to give it a class. Which is not a view controller. Which are topics view controller. Don't forget to put the current module over here, otherwise you will get some weird errors that you can file in class. Uh, and uh, while I'm here, I didn't really want to do this. Uh, so while I'm here, I'm going to put the storyboard ID as well. Cool. So now we are here. I'm going to make an outlet. Table view. Here we go. And that's pretty much it. So we're gonna rerun our test. You see, you don't have to be. You don't have. You don't have to have a test open. If you hit Control Option Command G, it will just run your last one. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, cannot hold value of a non function type UI table view. So very confusing error. I'm actually not sure what it does. Uh, what it what it even say. Um, so, what's that? It's just because it reads the table view, it reads the property. Okay. So it's like reading it as a function. Right? So it's the uh, unenforced, but yeah, the exclamation point. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I'll call it out, not actually a table view. Fake. Interesting. <laughs> 
So let's utilize our friend called compiler. In order to utilize our friend compiler, we'll need to inherit from two awesome okay. protocols. What are they? Yeah, here we go. So UI table U delegate, UI table U well, data source. Data source. Uh, then in order to conform to those protocols, we need to implement uh, table view self road index path. I'm just gonna return UI table view table cell here and I'm gonna uh, get a next one called number of rows in section and I'm gonna return number of our topics so now Here we go. Now we can finally complete that. And there are a number of rows in section. So this is so control table. So build succeeds, it's awesome. But we got an error and uh, the debugger area says that unexpectedly found nil while wrapping an optional value. So there's one uh, weirdness to, there's one important thing in testing uh, view controllers. So when you test view controllers, it doesn't load uh, the view, it doesn't load, go through view hierarchy, so view did load, did, is not triggered, none of those events are actually triggered inside the test. You actually need to take care of this you, yourself. So what that what happens here, uh, that controller.table view is basically nil. So in order to get our table view, which is defined as, a, as an outlet over here, uh, in order to get it in our test, we need to make sure that our controller that we got from the storyboard get it out of the storyboard. And this usually happens when just you access the view of the view controller. So in order to get our outlets connected, we just basically need to access the view. So all we need is just a full like access, access the view. And I usually just go ahead and Pull layout if needed to lay out, lay out the views uh, and our task passes. So now we're in step number two. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so now we have two tests though. The, like the final uh, point that I was driving is that now we have one test over here and we have another topic test over here. So in order to run both tests, uh, there's another keyboard shortcut called command U, which is basically run all tests over here. So we hit command U and now we run both our topics view controller test and topic test. So that's it. Thank you. So a couple important points to make that now that we know what this test driven development thing is, what do we do next? So, first point is that Apple promotes testing, and, uh, and uh, it wasn't really the focus. Testing wasn't really the focus uh, for the iOS platform in the beginning, but now it is. So now Xcode ships with XC Test. There's this new UI testing uh, framework that ships with Xcode. Uh, there's Xcode Server, which is a part of OS X uh, server that allows you to run your tests continuously. Uh, so Apple provides a lot of different tools to help you to test. So 
Test-driven development itself is a hard technique and it takes time to learn. So when I first started doing this in 2011, uh, it took me an entire year to really get into this mindset. It is a different way of thinking where instead of listening to, you know, reading through the story and going, just implementing the code right away, you need to read through the story and go to write a test for this. And then your test will drive the implementation. So that's a different mindset that you need to get used to this. And the best way to learn is just doing it. So you've got to force yourself to do this and you'll get it. All right, so here's some books. Um, I highly recommend reading the book down on the right hand side called Working Effectively with Legacy Code by Michael Feathers. So um, this book outlines all different techniques for uh, testing legacy code, how to get some legacy code under test and work with that. So examples in this book, uh, they're all, I think, in Java. They're not in Swift or Objective-C, but the principles stay the same. And the book on the left-hand side is called Test Driven iOS Development that goes, um, so the author of this book describes testing specific, spark, specific parts of the iOS platform. So testing view controllers, models, network layers, and all other interesting stuff. So, the internet has a lot of resources out there. So there's this awesome uh, magazine called ArchCIO. Objective CIO, I think that's what really this uh, means. Uh, so, issue number 15 is entirely dedicated to testing. Nice read, really, like a lot of really quality information uh, about testing, about how testing helps different companies and all, you know, all the different things that you can do with this. There's also a blog called IS Unit Testing, um, so go ahead and read it up, there's a lot of news there. So, and here's recap, so here's what we talked about. So, we talked about what is TDD, so TDD is a technique that allows you to um, uh, reach out to better quality of code by following some simple procedure of writing tests, making fast, and then refactoring. We talked about why we want to do TDD. We want to do TDD to ship stable product, and we do not want to do TDD when we're prototyping. And I showed you how to do this in Xcode. So let's keep in touch. Go ahead to subscribe to my blog. Uh, it's called howtoprogrambetter.com. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at fspro.ru. And my final point is this. So as developers, we have a lot of responsibility. We have a very big impact on how human society evolves. We write software that millions of people use. We have a great impact. And in order to get us to a better place as you know, humankind, we need to be better. We need to write better code. We need to be smarter. We need to figure out how to do more in less, in less time. And I think that test-driven development is a great way to get there. It's a, it's a great way to write quality code. So with all this inspirational speech right there, uh, go ahead and write some tests. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. All right, so we're going to break for a bit, just get some beers, uh, get some drinks, and uh, Scott is going to come over over here, we're going to set him up, and we will uh, talk about dependency injection with Typhoon and Quick, which is a swift behavior-driven development framework. <laughs>